your host, Cash Money Morgan. It's a beautiful uh, Thursday. Is it really Thursday already? Oh my gosh. Thursday. Ah, Thursday. Um, what's scary? But uh, I'm here with my beautiful, beautiful guest, Sarah Crane. That was the wrong button. I like this button more. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for letting us record in your studio. So, Anytime. fun fact Sarah and I have collaborated. This is like our three and a half time mm-hmm. in the past two weeks. Yeah. Wild. But Sarah is so amazing. You're so talented and I'm excited to like chop it up and get into it. So we're recording in her beautiful space. You're probably like, is this the loft we're going to do redecorate? No. Sarah actually owns a studio downtown, which we're going to get into. But mm-hmm. you want to just speak to that right away? Yeah. So I own Elwood Studios. It's downtown on East Walnut Street and um, it's a little over a year old. Um, we are kind of a traditional studio, um, more into the production side of things. Um, not a natural light studio. We have lots of artificial lighting for people to use. Um, but yeah, it's just honestly a dream come true. And I feel really blessed to be able to be here. Yeah, well, I'm blessed to be able to sit next to you. So vibes. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that needed to happen. Um, but I met Sarah around a year ago. We recorded a video here for my first podcast party, which I didn't really know what was going to happen. And I came in here and the thing about, like, I feel like I've done a lot of shoots and stuff at different studios, but Elwood is so different. Like it's a personality. You guys have like cool colors, different lighting. And then right away we did one of those fun nights you guys had. And, you know, just talking about, man, like inviting photographers, having this like creative community, uh, you know, where did that really come into your mind and that idea? Yeah, so Springfield, ever since I got into photography at a young age, as I'm a a photographer and videographer myself, um, it is very primarily a industry full of um, wedding and lifestyle photographers, um, lifestyle being like senior family photos, um, maternity, stuff like that. But I really immediately noticed that there's not really much of a space for people um, who are wanting to get into like the fashion realm or like the creative portrait side of things as much because there's just like not at the moment a huge market like for people to be paid and like have a full-time job doing that. Um, And so immediately when I started the studio and, and that was like the people I was going after was like these people I know who exist in Springfield who like want to do this, yeah. but there isn't a space for it. So we started doing these events to hopefully draw these people in. So it's like, okay, we'll come up with the models. We'll get their outfits like, and we'll set up all the sets and everything. And you just have to pay like five, 10 bucks and come yeah. in and shoot. And it's like, we would meet people and um, have so much fun just like getting to know people. And then you could see these people coming alive, like yeah. being able to do what they want to do. And then immediately it was really cool hearing people just like, man, like we've been waiting for something like this. Yeah. Like uh, it feels like, oh my gosh, like it, it really felt like, okay, this is what we're supposed to be doing when yeah. people say that kind of stuff. And it's so cool because I feel like you push the limits of these photographers, but also like the models. Like I remember even one of the first shoots, uh, you know, you had you had me there and like a couple other people. We did like makeup routine, stuff like that. And it's like, hey, we had three different outfits. We're having three different locations. We're going to switch really fast. We're going to do all all these poses, you know. And then so I feel like just the past year or two from doing different modeling stuff, it's 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 just so cool to see people's ideas and really like challenge yourself and try something different and then all the collaborations and partnerships and people you meet along the way so it's pretty cool that you've created really an environment and space that needed to be here but people didn't really know like what they were missing you know right right that's pretty cool it is it's really fun and I'm uh just so excited to see where even it's going to be going from here because I feel like we finally have kind of set in like during the first several months of us being open like there was photographers that just were curious that booked the studio and see and and they are more like lifestyle not that they can't be in here at all like they definitely can but a lot of lifestyle photographers in town um call themselves like natural life like photographers so I mean they know how to utilize and do that very well um but it was honestly probably really challenging for them to come in and like just try and use artificial lighting a lot of people were like no I'll just like shoot without it and then I was like man I feel bad because your photos aren't going to turn out like your normal Mm. quality because um 
we aren't meant to just be like another yeah. studio for these type of people. Um, but now I feel like we finally have got like the people who, who wanted a space like this. And mm-hmm. then the people who like, they know that <laughs> it's like, yeah. if they, like there's other fantastic studios, like for people who want natural light and it's just like, okay, we're not that. Yeah. And so it's, it's good to not like pretend like we have to be everything. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think that's, what's so great about, like different people in different niches in Springfield. Like if someone wants to come to me and they're like, okay, I want, you know, something really girly. I want this and this. I'm like, I'm probably just not the right person because yeah. I'm more so like vintage and I like this style and I'm like, ah. And so, you know, I just think it's great how there's just so many different options. But if someone's like, hey, I, I like the artificial light. I like this like creative mindset. I want to grow. I want like this really would be a great place for them. Right. So I feel like we have to back up. Like I feel yeah, like yeah. we like hopped in. So, so Sarah and I met a year ago, but we both at one point did attend Evangel University, correct? Right. Like you went yeah. there. I did graduate there, go, I'm, um, you know, crusader at heart, valor, I guess, on the paperwork. But so tell us like your story, I guess, you know, did you grow up from Springfield? Like what's your background, photography, the whole gamut? So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we have to start at Evangel now. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but sorry, I'm I also like ADHD like, with it. I'm like, oh, let's, you know, tell us how. Yeah. I'll go back to, like, the beginning. But okay. I feel like I I don't, we've not, like, talked, but I definitely have known who you were, like, because oh, okay. of Evangel for a while. But I definitely I like knew of you, like, too, because okay. I, I felt like I've chatted with your sister before. Maybe and so, that's it. And I, like, knew Rachel, so I was like... Uh, I think we but, did you live in Lewis? No, I was in Burgess. Ooh, okay. But <laughs> but I felt like we just knew a lot of the same people that I'd like seen your Instagram and stuff. Okay, gotcha. And I think maybe I thought you and your sister were like twins. Okay. So I don't know. A but, lot of people thought that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we used to have this guy um, that would come up to me on campus and call me my sister's name. He'd be like, hey, Elizabeth. And every time he like would think that I, like we were both the same person. That's every so time funny. it was so funny. But did you anyways, play into it at all? No. Dang. No. Um, I was like, okay, hi. Like, I just wrote it. <laughs> but it was whatever. Oh, It'd be too much. Um, okay, beginning, though. Yeah, I grew up in Springfield. Went to Willard um, from fourth grade on. I was homeschooled from kindergarten to third grade. Um, me and my sisters were homeschooled for a while, just kind of out of, like, something my mom really wanted to do. Um, and then it, like... <laughs> Once my sisters got into high school, she's like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then we all just went to public school. But um, I have enjoyed photography for really as long as I can remember, honestly. Um, I had, like, this little Tykes camera when I was, like, probably four or five. Okay. And I would just, like, bring it with me everywhere. I would go around, take pictures all the time. I would, like, be at family events and, like, getting close-ups yeah. of people. And they're just, like... <laughs> You're like, mom, like, look at this caterpillar. Like, like, <laughs> I have, like, the oddest pictures of my grandparents that are just, like, looking at me. And, like, I'm just, like, we need this. But, um, so cute, though. Like, yeah. And then I, like, never stopped loving it. And so, like, one year my grandma bought me, like, one of those tiny little digital cameras yeah. that's, like, pink and that's zoomed like, really far. right now. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now that it's really cool and I probably have it somewhere because yeah. I, like, couldn't get rid of it. But I started doing stuff on that. And then... um like found other people in the family who had like cameras that I thought were like really professional but they were just like bigger than a box camera yeah and so I started like taking everybody's cameras and shooting on stuff and I would like use my sisters and my friends and I'd be like okay let's go out and shoot and we would go out and shoot all the time like probably every weekend I would be doing something with somebody middle school and high school is super involved in yearbook um which just like even further um just like was fulfilling to me and my dreams and desires um and then I remember in like uh, my freshman year we were kind of planning out all of our um classes like tentatively for so, high school oh freshman year of high school yeah yeah okay 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 yeah so yeah. and I my counselor was like hey, you need, like, a, a language class. And I was like, um, okay. And she was like, yeah, you need it for, like, any college. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to college. <laughs> and she was like, well, you need to do it just in case you change your mind. Like, you'll really need a language class. Like, they, like you won't be able to get in certain colleges at all. And I was like, I just am not going to college. Yeah. And I remember saying that very, very early on. And, I, I mean, I think things did change. I didn't end up going to Evangel for a year. Um, just kind of out of, like, both my sisters went there. And I was like, 
okay, well, I guess this is, this is the thing I need to do. Um, so quick backing up there, yeah, like, yeah. as a freshman in high school, like knowing you're like, I don't want to go to college. Yeah. Like at that point, did you already like, what was your dream then? Like, oh, oh I'm going to yeah. be, you know, photographing Harry Styles. Like, you know what, mm-hmm. what was the dream at that point? Well, like ever since I picked up a camera, I was like, I'm going to be a photographer. Like anytime people yeah. would ask me, it was like all growing up, I'm going to be a photographer. And um, in high school, it got like, that's when I got into videography a little bit more too. So I could see myself um, doing both. Um, I was very into like, at my church, I would do lots of photography and videography. So I got a, lo- a lot of event experience. Um, so I could see myself like, oh, I could be like a concert photographer, or videographer. Yeah. Like I thought that would be so, yeah. so much fun to do that. Um, but yeah, cause I loved concerts too, but I ultimately knew I was like, I'm probably just going to end up doing it somehow, whether it's freelance, whether I'm working for a nonprofit. That's kind of why I went to Evangel was like, maybe I do want to work with like a nonprofit with videography, something like that. Was there a certain nonprofit that you were like, oh, this would be so fun to work for or. Yeah. I remember seeing a lot of videos that like Convoy of Hope would put out. Yeah. Um, and just like, and even, um, what is like a, it's a local human trafficking um not stand against trafficking no, no like, that's the one i'm in so. um, uh, um the hope some oh my gosh i can't believe I i'm forgetting it, it but it happens. Um, there's a lot of nonprofits, so which is good keep on growing baby <laughs> <laughs> but um i like would see the, their videos and i would just like be moved like so yeah. deeply in my core i'm like i want to make videos that move people and like make them feel something yeah and and now that's transferred over to like i want people to like feel that when they see my images as well like i want them to feel so moved and like seen um and feel something whenever um, they look at any of my work. So that's awesome. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So then you went to Evangel. Mm-hmm. You went there for one full year. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, I, it was the year like we we went and then like spring break happened. We left for spring break and never came back because COVID. Okay. So it was like I feel like I really only got like an actual semester. Gotcha. Because of just like how it happened. The first year of college was COVID year. Yes. So that kind of sucks, but. So spring break, and then you never came back. Right. So for, I guess, during that COVID season, how did you know you were like, I'm done, I'm not coming back to college, like this is the perfect time to dip or whatever? Yeah, so to be able to go to college, I had to like work on the side to be able to like pay, especially wanting that college experience. I wanted to live on campus even though I lived in town um, with my parents. I decided that I wanted it to live on campus. I had to work and then working every time I wasn't at school, I didn't have time to do photography. Like I really wanted mm. to. Um, and so I was like, just really upset about it. And then when COVID happened, I was like really just working and then doing online classes. So I was able to like get back into photography. A lot. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I just miss this so much. Um, and I just feel like the classes I was in, like, I just feel like they weren't leading me to where I wanted to be like I wasn't finding fulfillment out of any of them and so I began talking to my roommate and I was like oh man like I don't know if I am gonna come back next year or if I do come back next year I don't know if I'll live on campus because I like will be able to do more photography if I don't have to work as much yeah um things like that and so I um began to like having those conversations with her and then she started emailing our like housing advisor and was like yeah was I it pam at the time yeah, yeah my dog pam uh, <laughs> pam smallwood um, but she was like i don't know if my roommate's gonna come back at all next year or if she does she's probably not gonna live on campus so i'm gonna need to figure out like a new roommate and um whoever it was literally just like took me out of the system like, I literally got, like, an email that it was, like... You were, like, central alt deleted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, like, disenrolled, like, from... Unenrolled, disenrolled, unenrolled yeah. from the situation in the whole school. So I was, like, well, I guess that made my decision for me. Wow. I was, so like, you're, like, that's, that's the sign from God that I'm right. just not supposed to return. Exactly. Exactly. Dang. Yeah. And, I, I mean, in the process of, like, trying to figure out, I was, like, meeting with a few people, like, that I knew in town that worked at, like, marketing agencies or, like, did their own thing or were videographers. And I was just, like, talking to people about it. And they were all kind of, like, yeah, 
I don't know if I would have gone back if I would have done school or not. So yeah, I definitely had a lot of peace about it and That's definitely good. have no regrets. <laughs> Period. So how were your parents about that? Like, were they supportive from the start of like, yeah, I mean, if you don't want to go to college, you don't have to. Or they kind of like, yeah, try it out, you know, see what happens. Like, what was that like? Yeah, my parents like have this thing where they kind of, um, especially my dad, but they parent based on each child they always say gotcha um so my dad and mom from the start were immediately like you don't have to go to college because I remember saying it forever like since middle school I was like I'm not going to college so they were like you don't have to if you don't want to and then when I made the decision not to they were like literally okay like they just knew I was gonna figure it out yeah um but he always said like if one of my other sisters said that he would be like no like (laughs) interesting (laughs) because I think it was just like our the way we like work and the way we get things done has just always been different and like our our dreams have always been different and so like if they had done that he would have known something would have been more serious with them but I was just like gotcha I'll follow my dreams and figure it out yeah honestly I feel like my parents do the same thing too um like my sister's an esthetician and so they were like yes queen like kill it and my brother you know he's figuring everything out um and then there's me and I was like first born so it was more like Mm. you gotta go to college and this and this and it was so crazy is like my dad was in town last week and we were chatting and like obviously I'm gonna have some updates in my next solo pod but Mm. we're just chatting and honestly like now in life it's almost cheaper and smarter just to become an entrepreneur I mean Mm -hmm. I have very cute student loans that are cute and gonna be around for a bit and it's just kind of like with the market with the jobs right now like with everything going on it's very very tough that really you you know you take some online classes maybe you go to a tech school and then you just youtube university and you figure it out like it's almost just better which is which is so crazy right. because when i was a senior in high school it was like the minority to not go to college like right yeah either go to college you go to tech school like what or hair school like besides that like what are you gonna do you know right. whatnot and now it's kind of like oh like actually there's a million things you could do like oh you're going to go to college oh cool you know good for yeah. you like so it's just crazy how that can change in like eight to 10 years, you know? Yeah. It was, it was very still like in the minority um, saying that in high school. I remember people being like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like it was like so weird, but did you have a lot of friends that were like doing that too when you were in high school or like, were you kind of like the first one in your group or circle to like pave that way? Honestly, I didn't really have a group or circle in high school. <laughs> say I'm like a loser, but you're not a loser. <laughs> but I definitely like I had some friends you're that so I would talk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but like I honestly, I had like best friends, but they were all from like my youth group. Like yeah. I was like hang out. I was like, oh, my friends go to different schools, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I um definitely <laughs> was like not a huge fan of high school because yeah, of, I just didn't really find a group that I loved. I wasn't either. I mean, I have a few friends from high school that we still chop it up, but like, I always feel like high school walked so that college could run. Like that's where I was like me. I didn't, I mean, I don't know how you feel for that one year. I also, I was like, I feel like maybe I'm just not very good in like huge social situations. Mm -hmm. I don't like get anxiety from it, but like, I am not the type of person that's going to like I'm not a great networker, (laughs) unlike you, Ms. Morgan, (laughs) network with everybody and anybody. Um, But I just am never that person where I feel like I can just join in a group all of a sudden and just be like, okay, I'm part of this. I like act like myself. Like it takes me a while to warm up to people. And so I feel really good like one-on-one or like small groups with people because I just like love getting to actually have meaningful conversation. But like all the parts before that, I'm just like, I feel like I just kind of blend in somewhere interesting yeah which is so fascinating because when I didn't really know Sarah and then like came and we did I remember that like OG modeling night everyone like all the girls here like guys here were just like wow like she's so talented like you know because you're teaching everyone and you're showing them how like different lighting and different things and everyone's like wow like this is so great and you just like it was like you owned and obviously you own the place but <laughs> it was just like your personality was just very confident you were like yeah this is it and everyone I just I just never would have gotten that vibe that you didn't like social settings that much you know right. yeah um fooled me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel like but. it's um I still definitely deal with that um, 
One thing about me is that I don't play games unless it's ping pong at Classics Yard. Classics Yard is Springfield's number one social sport and game center. It is located in the back of Classic Rock Coffee Company headquarters and next door to the Riff. Coffee, sports, music, what more could you want? Located at 1900 West Sunset Street in Springfield, Missouri. Be sure to check them out, play some games, and reserve your event today. Visit www.classicsyard.com. A little bit, but I also just love having a place and like being able to empower people that, you know, they can do what they want and like have fun with it. Yeah. And there's a space for that. So absolutely. And I think there's so much like in photography that I do want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, But just to back up a little bit. So you're 22 years old. You're you own, you know, you own this business. Mm -hmm. You have a space. You're married and you recently had a baby. I want you to give it up for Sarah. I'm 24 and I'm like, I don't even know if I can commit to a date. Like (laughs) Sarah's like, I'm like, I'm about to get a bus. Like I'm just straight chilling. I get to like going across the country. So, oh my gosh, like tell us about this whole like, you know, where'd you meet your man and you had a baby and you're like so young. Have you always wanted to kind of, uh, you know, have kids younger and like just vibe out? Is that always a dream? I feel like this is like really wild to say, but I feel like my life has turned out exactly like I thought it would. For you? <laughs> we have like really close family friends and um, growing up, they like all got married at like 19 and 20. And I was like, okay, like I'm doing that too. Like yeah. it was just like something I thought, even though like in high school, I never dated anybody at all until like the last week of high school. I like officially started dating Jarrett, wow. my husband. and we. It's actually really wild. It's we met kind of in in middle school. I think it's like the first time we had classes together. And immediately I was just like, I was that middle school girl. Like you look back and cringe on, but like how middle schoolers are supposed to be. And right. now they're just really cool. Actually. So you have like diaries and diaries about <laughs> I, Miss Jarrett. I literally like- have <laughs> diaries. And I was just like, went through a phase of wearing like cowboy boots but not in a cute way okay why okay but why is that literally me sophomore year of high school like (laughs) and it was just like not the most fun era of my life but it was fun during that time looking back it's whatever but I when like our whole world was a boy like right (laughs) right and I like played softball and I like had the most I was like really fun during that period of my life um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I, I feel like you're still fun so uh okay <laughs> nothing compares to how fun I feel like I was in middle school but really yeah I don't know what it was I was, I was so it was gross <laughs> I yeah but it's like in the good way yeah. um anyways I had met Jarrett in one of my classes and then we like had those things like advisories or whatever at the end of the day and we had all these dumb things like that they want you to like better the community but it's just not really a community it's like your school gym or something Mm. (laughs) and so we like had this other breakout class like for one quarter of the year together um or like maybe i don't know a few weeks um but i was just like i love Jared Green. <laughs> this yeah. was when you were in middle school? Yes, I was Dang. in middle school and I was like, had all my friends and I was like, guys, I like him. And then I had like several friends that were like, oh my gosh. And then they would like try to get us to talk. And then I was in seventh grade when this happened. And one of my eighth grader friends, she was like an office worker. And she was like, I can get you his schedule so you can bump into him on the hallways. She's like, ever heard of creeping? I've been doing, I've been running this back since literally middle school. <laughs> so Miss Girl got me his schedule. Oh my gosh. She I risked her like, job for you. Like. She really did. But then I started bumping into him in the hallways. And then one of my friends or somebody found out, snitched on me, told Jarrett, never spoke to me again mm. never never spoke to me again and then from literally there snakes in the grass there were snakes and from literally seventh grade to our junior year in high school it was just like awkward eye contact in the hallways and then like you like flinch away in your life did you still like him all those years there was like definitely something in where you, like i thought he was cute all those mm-hmm. years like i mean i don't 
I don't know if I could say like I liked him all those years because I didn't really know him, but like I definitely was crushing all yeah. those years. You never like talked to someone else or like no. yeah, anyone else. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, like I kind of talked to like blah blah blah, and then just like yeah. stupid boys, whatever. Yeah. But it was like <laughs> never anything. Like I'd never held hands with anybody. Never went right. on a date. Nothing. Okay. Um, and then our junior year, we like the summer before, like a couple weeks before school started, we both. Um, ended up at this meeting together that we both were starting this job where we watch kids after school, um, like before their parents. Just you pick both them up. happened to be doing that. Yes, like we, you, and you had seen no schedule of his. No, That's and great. at the same elementary school because there's like five or six maybe now that like are all Willard Elementary schools, mm-hmm. and we just like got placed at the same one. So I was like, oh, my gosh. And, of course, I did not talk to him there either. (laughs) And then um, my sister worked with me at that one, too. And so she was, like, making it her goal to, like, us become friends at least and not be awkward. And so, like, we would all go in every day when school started. And we did become friends. And we just, like, me and and my sister and Jared, like – we just like would start talking and like having fun. And then eventually like I was in charge of the kindergarten group and he was in charge of like fifth graders. And you could like merge classes every once in a while, like when you're close in grades or yeah. you have, like a small amount of kids or whatever. But he would always just like merge the fourth or the fifth graders. <laughs> and, the, kindergarten. and the kindergartners were they're like, Why are we here together? Yeah. One and but, yeah. yeah. It was like but he would we would always just like try and merge so we could hang out more. Um and then our senior year, he stopped working at that location um, and got like a different job. And um, we just kind of were still friends here and there. Like we'd say hi in the hallways mm-hmm. at that point, but like nothing more than that. And um, then one of my our, our mutual friends who did work with us, too, um, she was like, hey, later on in our senior year was like, would you ever like think about dating Jarrett and I was like She's that like, was like came out of left field really like left field because so, but you were so crushing on him but, during this but school stuff this right this is the thing though Jarrett was like cool <laughs> like I was like I just can't fathom a world where you're, you're like not girl. cool you know what no, I'm no, saying like, no I just like I wasn't but okay. Jarrett was actually cool. Maybe Willard is just like bougier than Wisconsin's cool. Because I didn't feel like I was cool in high school. But also I was like, I don't really care about it. Like, I didn't like, care. Like, But I just like, there was like groups and I was yeah. like not in the groups, which is fine. And I didn't want to be. But <laughs> period. <laughs> um, uh, he was. And he like knew all the, like and hung out with all the people. And like also had his little phase of like bad boy Jared okay, who thinks okay. he wasn't supposed to do all right um and I was like and I knew of those things through that girl so I was like I was like I don't think so unless like I really like knew he actually like loved God probably That's because good. I just yeah. knew he was like not really heading down a super great path at the moment like based on things she would tell me and so I was like I don't think so and then all of a sudden he starts attending my church with his friends and i'm Mm. like oh this is wild um and he started attending my church and then like started coming to youth and then at that point he like started just i think messaging me through instagram again okay and we just like would talk and he would come to youth group with me and then eventually like we started hanging out and i think we just like would um i think like the first time we hung out we literally just like went and got like pineapple whip and then went to like tj maxx or something it was nothing like cute or anything but we started like hammocking a lot which was really fun and like going on hikes because we both like Mm -hmm. love nature and um yeah from there it kind of just started progressing but the thing about it is he's a man of many trades he was going into the marines wow so we knew he was going to the marines in june or july after we graduated in May and like he was going into active. And so like he would be gone for four years. Wow. Yeah. And I'd like maybe see him in that four years, like 10 days at max. Oh my gosh. And so I was like, mm, so nervous, but I just like committed and I was like, okay. And then like maybe a month before he was supposed to leave that he like got word that this like opportunity to be in the reserves opened up. Like he could switch, yeah. which just, I guess, isn't a common thing to be able to switch after you like already sign and stuff. Yeah. 
but he switched and he got into the Marine Reserves. And so now he just like has drill like one week in a month. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So he saw to leave for like three months and do like the whole boot camp thing. And then he came back yeah. for like two weeks and then went for another like two months or three months to like a, yeah. a more intense training. So how old were you when you got married then? Um, we got engaged when I was 19. Wow. And, um, and then we got married at 20, both of us. Yeah. Wow. And then did you guys know from the jump, like, we want to have kids right away or no. pretty soon? No, we like had talked about probably like mid to late twenties, just like be able to do a lot, travel, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And, um, then like probably a year in, it was just like. I feel like we could do all this with a job. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, well, let's yeah. just, you know, see what happens. And then shortly after she, we found out I was pregnant. And then, um, yeah, now we have her, had her in December and we just love her so much. And we really do basically everything with her. Yeah. Like she goes everywhere with us. Guys, it was so cute. Like we did, we did a fun shoot which i'll talk about later <laughs> but we did a fun shoot and sarah like we're outside with the drone we're going mm -hmm. upstairs we're doing this like massive outdoor shoot and she's just like holding little l like in her shirt with the camera like bro girl power like yeah. i love, like women bro yeah and men awesome i mean he's holding there too like it's yeah. just awesome to see that you know i guess for me like it's just so hard sometimes that um, like my friends will be like Morgan, like just cause you get married does not mean like life stops being fun or like right. you have kids. And I think I've just like, I'm such a different stage that it's hard for me to like comprehend that sometimes. Yeah. But I'm like, you're right. Like just because you get married doesn't mean like your personality changes and mm -hmm. you stop being who you are and what you love to do. And so, yeah. Like we're having we, kids. Yeah. We hang out with our friends. still with her, like we go to the soccer fields and she's just like, I just wear her on me like yeah. in a, a carrier, but we really do everything. And it's so much much fun with her um and yeah it definitely takes both of us so and and I really am grateful for the careers that we have because if I had like a nine to five it would not be like that like yeah. I cannot imagine doing that like that would have been a whole different setup but with the um careers we have like it's definitely perfect for us yeah so transitioning to uh back to you know photography videography mm -hmm. what would you say really like is your style mm -hmm. um I guess your favorite things to shoot maybe like your editing style mm -hmm. uh, if you want to expand on that yeah so um started out with photography do videography now but with both of them I consider myself more in the document documentary world of things um not as much like a lot of people think street photography is kind of in that category um but with anything I'm shooting which is a Primarily, I do shoot a lot of weddings, um, but I do also a lot of branding. Um, I do events, all these things. All of it, my main goal at all times is to document what's going on in a real way, catching all the emotions from people. Yeah. So it's really important to me when I shoot weddings that I'm like not only shooting like the the bride and the groom but I'm like watching their family and seeing how their family reacts and like getting all those moments as well because that is like a huge part of the day is is how you're interacting with people um and capturing all the little tears and all the smiles and all the moments and and so I definitely would say my biggest goal is to like when people look back on their photos or their video that they remember exactly how the day was with yeah. all the emotions involved that's awesome. What's the hardest part about being, you know, a full-time photographer, you know, videographer with so many competitors in town? I guess like having your own niche or like having your own style and having someone choose you. Like, what does that look like here in Springfield? Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't really see like a lot when people reach out to you, they're not like, oh, I'm talking to you and this like, and they name someone. That's not typically how it works. Um, so you don't really firsthand like have a single competitor which is nice yeah. because there's like probably there's hundreds of photographers in Springfield right. like hundreds there's so many photographers um and so I found that I just have to stick true to myself I have to like share exactly my thoughts so I like lay out flat on the table I meet with somebody I try and have like an in-person consultation or over the phone if they're not available to but telling them like I edit naturally like I don't change colors I don't um I mean I like do small edits with light and stuff but I do not like make it look like a whole different place or a whole right. different day um and so I have to just be honest because I only want to attract the people that want to have my work yeah and so when somebody comes to me and they're like well could you do this but like edit it like this and then give me an example it's like 
I only, I think you're only going to be happy if, if you choose a photographer that you immediately know you love their work. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't really necessarily feel like competing as much as like I'm bringing in the people who have been moved by my work. And that is really valuable to me. Yeah, that is really valuable of just like learning more about photography, you know, whether it's different cameras, different styles, education. Like when I came here for that night, I mean, you know, your stuff, you, and plus too, like just the fun, different things you put over the lenses and the lights and all these things. Like, where did you learn all of that? Really? I guess. Yeah. So I think that kind of has to go back to like why I would started. Um, so I've, loved studio photography for a long time and I like started it way back um where I grew up with my family in Elwood Missouri that's why this okay. is called Elwood okay um I actually never knew that no it I, I haven't really shared a lot of it <laughs> <laughs> but I would like make studios in my garage like my parents garage and I would like hang up like a literal white bed sheet and like do all this stuff and then like edit it to make it look really smooth even though it's like wrinkly as crap and all this stuff <laughs> but I like started doing this stuff and then I like would kind of here and there purchase something like a backdrop and then even like my dad's friends like they would find random stuff at like auctions and like get me these lights yeah. and stuff and and so I like started accumulating these things and then after my family moved from our like childhood home um I like was still searching for a space to like do these sessions that I wanted and so like my dad is in the construction world and so I would like ask his friends who are like builders to be like can I use your houses like that oh, hadn't that's cool yet. and they yeah. would, like let me use their houses and I but it was like weird like having so many people pull up to like a house that just like says for sale and it's like brand yeah. new and you're like bringing all these backdrops and lighting in and so even though I'm really grateful for it I started just kind of looking for spaces um because I've always lived downtown and so found this one but with the lighting stuff um I kind of started learning just on my own um, how things worked. And then it even was an adjustment when I first came in the studio because I didn't even have as much as I have right now lighting wise. And so a lot of it was like every time I had a question, it was like looking it up. Yeah. And I like even to this day, like I know more th like some more now, but like when someone would just like say a certain thing, it's like, OK, strobe and like flash or typically this like they're OK. It's kind of synonyms, but it's like that is hard to just like jump into the world and know all the terms for everything. And when someone would ask or something and yeah. not knowing it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Like all the things like that. And so I'd definitely been learning over time. Um, and having those nights, I learn a lot as well. Just like, okay, let's try all these things out. And like, yeah. just like putting things together. Um, so it was definitely self-taught, um, YouTube university. All yeah, the bro. Oh my gosh. Um, and then even learning from people who come in here and use things different ways. It's like, oh, yeah. I've never seen that. And so like just being open, you don't have to pretend that you know everything. So that's yeah. freeing to know. No, that. that's good. Was it was it scary like opening this building, um, you know, by yourself? Because I know in the beginning stages, like you had some people that were like partnered with you, especially being young. Like I know in myself, I've feel like I've had a lot of good work experience. I'm like, okay, I can do this now. Like I can do this. Uh, but especially like being your age, was that like frightening, like having an accountant and like figuring out all the business stuff? Like, okay. what was that like for you? It was terrifying. <laughs> and I, I did have a partner originally, one of my best friends, Anne, um, and it was like helpful with her being in here. But at the same time, I still did all the business side of things for the most part. She helped me like run bookings, plan events, all the amazing things I needed help with. But um, there was like things I didn't know for a long time. Like I was like, OK, I know I need to collect sales tax, but I was just like for months collecting and I didn't know where I needed to pay it. Like, yeah. Like, and I didn't know I needed to like sign up for stuff. And so like having people that like know what they're doing is so worth it to me. Like having an accountant, luckily, like I knew people, I had connections, um, that I could like get in with them pretty easily and mm -hmm. not like have to search for those people as well. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very crazy and, um, super scary because it's like, okay, well, if this doesn't work out, then I'm like paying out of what I make for the studio. And that's, right. it was like something I knew I could do for a year, but I didn't know after that. And I was just like, honestly felt like I was surviving because I just really desperately wanted it to work out. Yeah. 
the mentors in my life too have said to me, you know, whether you start a business or whatever you do, they're like, it can fail three times and you can start another one the fourth time. And they're like, the most beautiful thing about your 20s is that you just kind of try and fail Mm -hmm. and then you learn. Um, And so even though, you know, we're both in our 20s and we're just kind of like, ah, like we're trying, we don't know, like we're navigating. It's the cool thing is that, you know, we are so young that it's like we can try and fail. And and just even the story, like do you even want to share it all about because I know we talked about like, you know, will Elwood continue when partners leave? Yeah. Like, do you want to share any of that at all? Or Yeah. Um, so when I found out I was pregnant, I had like my friend Anne was still involved. And um, then we had some other people helping out and getting involved. Um, and those things kind of all faded away as people moved away. And then like the talks about moving and starting other careers. And so everybody had a fade out and it was just back to me again. Yeah. Pregnant. And I was like okay, my lease renews in January. I'm giving birth in December. And I don't even know if I'm going to want to have this anymore. Yeah, I don't know if I can do it by myself. Um, It was so, so confusing. And so we did announce that we were closing. Um, I was was sad, you guys. I cried. Like that, it was sad girl hours, Frank Ocean time. yeah, Yeah, it was so sad. And I was just like, not feeling settled about it, like not feeling peace about it. And I was like, man, like I truly feel like there could be something more still. And I was like having such open conversations about it. I'm like, I'm just going to talk about it to whoever like it comes up with because maybe someone would like want a partner or something. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had a couple conversations with people about partnering. Nothing just worked out. And so I was like, okay. So I decided to close. And then, um, after that still kept having conversations and was praying about it. And I was like, okay, if, if we, if something were to happen, like, and we need to stay open, these are like the three things I would want in place, um, for it to happen. And like all of the things happened Wow. in place. And it was like the financials got in line. Um, and, like the commitment of like, I was super scared to do it alone. And now I have, um, Chase on, on the team. Yeah, Chase. Chase is amazing. Chase was just like, how can I help from day one? He was like, how can I help? I don't like literally expect anything in return. And that was like, that was a game changer knowing I could like, okay, let's try it out. Yeah. And just my landlord in general, like being super understanding. Cause I was just like, so nervous that I'm like, I don't know if I want to like sign a long lease like, yeah. and and that's a huge commitment to just starting a family and not knowing how I'm going to feel. And he was like super down to work with me wow. and like was just like so understanding of that feeling. And now I, I feel like I'm like, man, I want to keep this open forever. Right. And so like him just like being willing to work with me in my fear was like huge. Yeah. yeah. And it's so crazy because it's like when God wants something to happen, the door is open. Right. And it's just like that waiting time when we're like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm lost. I'm confused. I'm scared, you know, but when you're just like fully surrendered and you're like, okay, it's your plan. Like do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, even stuff I'll talk about my solo pod. It's just like yeah. stuff where you're like, I don't know. But then once, you, once like his plan starts happening and well, I mean, all of it's part of the plan, right? The waiting season's part of the plan. But like once you start seeing stuff move, I mean, I don't know about you, but you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm meant to do this. Like yeah. I can't imagine... Like, I can't imagine Elwood closing, like how sad that would be, because it really feels like this is a, like, not just like a photo studio, it's really like a place that curates dreams in my mind mm-hmm. and like vision and creativity. And it's just like so different than other places I've been to. So yeah. long live Elwood. Long live Elwood. <laughs> like we should have kind of like a girly pop portion of the podcast. Absolutely. Getting to know you a bit more of like, you know, in a smaller way, I guess. I don't know. Chopping, I don't, I don't know what adjective <laughs> I'm looking for. Um, okay. So who would be like the ideal dream client to photograph or something like that? Like anyone in the whole world, like if you had to anyone pick anyone in the dead or alive. <laughs> mm. Um, I think it would be a dream to like photograph, um, other creatives that I like look up to. Okay. Um, so like Joe Greer would be a huge one. Okay. Um, like Eric Floberg, like a lot of people on the, like, there's this creative club in Chicago that I like really like all of the people yeah. involved with that. And I think it'd be just like so cool if like someone like that I looked up to was like, hey, could you like photograph my family or yeah. like, photograph this event I'm at? Oh like, gosh, I love that. Yeah, I love be that. really meaningful. What's a fun fact about you that people don't really know typically? We're always like the weirder the better here on Keeping Up With Cash. 
um it could be like deep it could be not deep you know it could be like i haven't brushed my teeth in seven years you know like i wouldn't judge you but also i'd give you a mint like (laughs) (laughs) you know um a fun fact about me this is really hard it's okay um It's like I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't prepared. No, I, I this curve was not prepared. Um, that's okay. I mean, if it's helpful, I can give one too. Yeah, if that's helpful. One okay. Fun please. fact that like I don't say all the time. Think, 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 think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fun fact. This past week, I thought I hit a car, which my dad's literally gonna die. <laughs> but like I didn't. I did not. I'm still two years free of not hitting a car. And um I accidentally Apparently, I was, like, backing up into a shopping cart that was on the ground at Walmart. So, thankfully, my car was completely fine. But I, the way that I literally, like, <laughs> I was like, please tell me, God, there's no way I hit a car. <laughs> me and my, my insurance just, it's a whole thing. I used yeah. to have, me and cars, we just tussle. So, okay. not the best driver. But it's not a girl thing. It's just a me thing. So, yeah. period. I have two fun facts now. Okay, so, okay, okay wait. Okay, I have one so, embarrassing story and oh, one fun fact. Perfect. That's like what I live for. Okay, yeah. so fun fact is, so we have a friend group and that we hang out like all the time. And... Must we, be nice. I'm just uh, <laughs> and we drive to Joplin all the time to go get crumble cookies because we don't have one in town You yet. do realize a crumble is coming here, right? Yes, but we yeah. like, don't have one yet. And so we what? drive to Joplin like too much to go get crumble wow. cookies. you're really like insomnia you are just not good enough no and then we all have like every one of us has like the cookie cutter that like cuts them evenly and then we all like have to try them at the same time and wow. then re-rate them all wow is there like do you guys have like a notes app or something where you just have like lists and lists of crumble cookie ratings no, no? we just we just live for the moment we wow that is actually so fun i do it love is so that. fun it's like honestly i might be kind of sad when it opens in town because i mean the hour and 10 minute drive there and back is like kind part of, of the part. vibe like that's the only reason i go i don't think crumble's that good like <laughs> i would rather not <laughs> oh my gosh but i like enjoy the the vibes yeah. of driving to joplin i think there's a mo southwest grill in joplin and i think that's the last one because they closed one here and i think they're gonna close the one in branson in case you didn't know i used to email the gm and whatnot i'm very serious about my t- my mexican food but yeah, so in case you guys ever trying to hitch a ride to go to the Moe's, I'll go with you. <laughs> Dang, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's this embarrassing story? Okay, so this kind of has to do with Elwood, too, because I've told you this. I went to the Rockish. Rackish? Right, yeah, Rakish. Ra- Honestly, Rakish. I talked to Whitley, and she's like, I don't even know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a vintage market in town. Yeah, and it's so good, guys. It's so, so good. So good. Um, we got asked to do a photo booth. Oh, yeah, this is a good story. And um, <laughs> they did it at, like, an old school, like an elementary school. And so we, with the photo booth, we brought, like, a backdrop in, like, the stands and lighting and stuff. And we were up on this, like, gymnasium stage And we got set up and everything. And then one of the other vendors there, it like had just like the time it started for everybody to start coming in. So there's people in there. And one of the like vendors was like, hey, could you take some headshots of me? I was like, awesome. We had this couch. And I was like, can you like sit on the edge of the couch? I thought it'd be really cute to do. Mm -hmm. And she's like, can you show me what you mean? And I'm like, used to that. So I was like, sure, exactly. So I go to sit on the edge of this couch. The couch just completely flips over on its back. I fall, the backdrop paper rips, and oh. we're in the gymnasium, so it's this huge echoing sound. And I might have hit my head, but I just don't remember because I would have taken everything back, everything back to not be in that moment. Oh, that's, I... I still think about it. And Chase still literally gives me such a hard time about everyone now and then. He'll be like, hey, remember when you tried <laughs> Stop, Jeez. I can't think All about I it. here is like Sarah knew how to make an entrance. Like Sarah well, knew how to get the attention on Elwood. And I'm like, please, nobody. That was that. No, I, everyone goes through embarrassing stories, I feel like. Yeah, and well, that, that was like, I'm not over <laughs> it yet, but maybe one day. That's okay. I feel like, I mean, I shared one at my podcast party. I've had a lot of different embarrassing stories, but um, I don't know if I should. I feel like this is your moment, so I'm not going to do it. I don't know. I don't. Do it. Uh, one time I was working at a David's Bridal, and 
Um, I was a, a dress stylist, so I'd be like, are you saying yes to this dress? Like, you know, that was totally me. And I remember one time I was wearing this skirt and mid appointment with a bride, my skirt split in half. And I was just like completely out there. Like it's giving Adam and Eve in the store. Like I'm like, ah, and, but the thing about it was that the store is mainly women. And so immediately, like I was mortified, this bride sitting right here. And but so I just go on and I go to the alterations room and she's like fixing my skirt. But she's like, it's not gonna be done for a few hours. Like you need to go put something else on. So I put on a bridesmaid's dress <laughs> and I go to sell this wedding dress to this bride. And then I was like, well, what do you think about like this for the bridesmaids? And like, <laughs> she ended up like getting both of them. But I just remember like I was I was happy about that. But <laughs> but just something about like your pants splitting in the middle of the store yeah. in front of a client that like and like trying to be professional, trying to be professional. Like it's just I don't know. I just. It wasn't my worst moment ever, but it's one that's like scarred for sure yeah. in the brain. Yeah, but for sure. Yeah. Well, okay. So, who's your favorite musical artist right now? Would you say? Um, my favorite musical artist right now. Um, I feel like one I always come back to is uh, like this is kind of whatever, but it's Switchfoot. I love okay. Switchfoot. Yeah, I know it's concerts. good. I also really like Colony House. Um, Tyson Mottenbacher, and then a really good instrumental one I listen to all the time is Hammock. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What is something, like, on the spiritual side, you know, we've talked about, like, Elwood and mm -hmm. things God has done. Like, what is something that you feel like he's really spoken to you in this season yeah. or he's kind of, like, reassured you or helped you with? Yeah, I feel like something that, like, um, is, like, huge that I keep repeating over and over right now is – I don't wait, I honestly know like where it's from, but it's the verse that kindness leads people to repentance. Like God's kindness leads people That's to good. repentance. And so it's not like, um, there's no reason for me to be like living in this world and like avoiding anything or like not yeah. being a part of things. Like it's me like being as kind as I can to people is like going to be doing exactly what I need to be doing all the time. That's good. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Jesus was love. And that's mm -hmm. one thing we'll talk about in my solo pod, but it's like a hundred percent, like even in my own life, people have come up to me and been like, and I'm not trying to gas myself up, but it's, but they'll be like, I hated Christians until mm -hmm. I met you. And I didn't even realize like, you're the first person that just didn't judge me. And sometimes it's just, that's what it takes to build that relationship with mm -hmm. someone that like just had bad experiences. Yeah. And it's like, what would Jesus be like? You know, yeah. he would be friends, he would be kind, he would be loving. And so I think that's just amazing, mm -hmm. especially like what you can curate here in the studio yeah. while having that mindset is, is awesome. Yeah. Um, what's the most challenging part of, I guess, you know, being a business owner slash photographer right now in this season? I think like it's especially um, sticking out in this season um, because I just had an L, but I think all of the people I look up to and like where I would like to go and like my dreams are all men, which is completely Interesting. fine. Like I'm like, go everybody doing their thing, living right. their dreams. But like, it looks different because like my life is automatically going to look different. Like yeah. I like being the mother in, in that relationship. And so it's a little bit complicated and hard um, to navigate and figure out like my place and being able to still look up to these people and follow my dreams. But it's just like, I look up to men. Mm -hmm. So there's Chase. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's good that someone, you know, like you as a woman, as a mother is, mm -hmm. is going to achieve your dreams and doing these things. Cause I need, I feel like we need that exposure. Like we yeah. need that. And I mean, I agree. I think there's a lot of like business people and, um, you know, digital nomads, entrepreneurs that I look up to men and women that I'm like, I can do this. And once you're like in a conference room filled with men and they see, they're like, okay, I need marketing. Like I need photos and yeah. I don't know this. And I know you understand it and you have good style right. and you have that respect. Like it just makes it so worth it where you're like, I know who I am. I know where my self-worth yeah. comes from. I know where my talent's from. Um, because I feel like that's just hard as a woman in business, period, yeah. to deal with, you know? But yeah, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for coming on the podcast. Oh, You're cool. so fun. Of, of course, course, everyone needs to come visit Elwood Stat. Um, we end every single show the same. Okay. Favorite song, favorite quote, and what do you want your legacy to be? Favorite song is Where Is My Mind by the Pixies. Okay. Um, okay. Favorite quote is 
the beginning of love is to let those who we love to be perfectly themselves and not to twist them to fit our own image. Otherwise, we only love the reflection of ourselves we find in them. That's good. By Thomas Merton. That's good. That's good. Um, and my legacy, I want my legacy to be that um, people had meaningful conversation where they just like learn things about themselves when they're with me. That's good. That's good. Um, and where can people find you? Photography slash Outwood and everything. Yeah. So my photography business is called SB Photography and Videography. And that's on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I have a website. And then um, Elwood Studios is also on Instagram and has a website, Facebook, all the things. And yeah, that's that's both of them. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to follow Sarah on everything. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, you guys. Now we have better video. I want to shout out CJ. He's my amazing videographer. I just want to give him so much credits. He's so amazing. We love you, CJ. Um, Pre-order. You can still definitely order some merch. I appreciate all your patience. You know, when it's like a smaller business, podcast vibes, things take time financially and vibes. So just <laughs> we appreciate it. Everything's yeah. made with love. Yeah. And just go out and have the best week ever. Don't let setbacks, you know, affect your mindset and your future. And, you know, lean on God and lean on your friends. So yeah. bye. Thanks so much, guys, for keeping up with cash. Bye. <laughs>